Now, hey, welcome to another episode of MLM Renegade. You guys, this week we're going to talk about mindset. So here's the million dollar question. How are network marketers like us, who've tried everything their upline ever suggested to be successful and yet still struggled, who grew up with technology and aren't stuck in the 20th century, how are we supposed to grow our downlines in our bank accounts and yet still have time for real life? My name is J.R. McKee. Join me as we explore how to use 21st century learning and technology to grow our downlines and build lasting wealth. Simply put, this is MLM done different. Welcome to MLM Renegade. All right, guys. So this week I did a training for uh, my team about mindset and the mindset of growth versus the mindset of scarcity or, or a fixed mindset. And uh, it was awesome. And it was, it, it, if I do say so myself, and I wanted to, I wanted to share it with everybody because honestly, I think that there's a lot of value there. Uh, and so I, I, I ripped out the audio from the video and, uh, and, and I built it here so that you guys could take a listen. But uh, anyway, so check this out. Um, it's a fantastic training around what we need to do really to identify uh, and and use a, a mindset that's going to benefit us, a growth mindset. All right, guys. Hopefully you guys are all well tonight. Uh, going to wait for just a second here so, so others can pop on, but uh, excited to talk with you guys tonight a little bit it's been it's been a while since i've been on uh doing, done a 10 at 10 so um but i've got a lot that uh has been kind of pent up in my head that i've been thinking about um and and so i wanted to you know kind of kind of share uh, a little bit uh that i've been some of the things i've been thinking about so um i titled this mindset for mlm um and and i've been thinking about a lot about that lately uh, because it's been, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? It, well, I'm, so I've been listening to this book on Audible. Uh, you guys know, you know, that I, I listen to a lot of books. Um, and um, anyway, so I've been listening to this book called Mindset. And, you know, we talk a lot about mindset, and we talk a lot about the need uh, to, you know, have a proper mindset, to, um, to really be kind of thinking about things, uh, in, in the right way. In this book, I highly recommend it, uh, first of all. Uh, again, it's called Mindset. I can't remember the uh, author real quick here. Let me pull up um, Audible and I'll, and I'll tell you guys because um, it it's a great uh, read slash listen in my case. Um, so it is, um, it's called Mindset, the New Psychology of Success, How We Can Learn to Fulfill Our Potential. It's by Carol S. Dweck. PhD. She's actually a psychology professor at Columbia University, um, and she the the book is fantastic, and it really is focused on um, a. And let me grab my notes here real quick. Um, but it's focused on the difference between a growth mindset and a closed mindset or a fixed mindset, um, and and that's been what I've really been trying to to think about and kind of wrap my brain around because. You know, we all go through ups and downs in the business, um, and, and every business has ups and downs. And I think one of the things that, that oftentimes we get stuck in can be kind of a, a closed-minded, a fixed mindset sort of, uh, sort of frame of mind. And, and so I wanted to kind of maybe define the difference real quick between a fixed mindset and a growth mindset, okay? Because I think it's really important uh, so that everybody can can understand where we catch ourselves. Because I like to think that I'm open-minded, that I have a growth mindset, but holy cow, I've caught myself in thinking, oh my gosh, that's that's totally a fixed mindset. And I totally do that. And I need to change that. I need to fix that. Um, and even from everything from how I talk to my kids to how I interact with uh, my boss to how I interact with my wife to to how I interact with my team uh, within, within the organization here. You know, I, I, I try and understand how to do that. So, I, I you know, I, I try to think about that and, and how we would do it here with, with New Skin. In fact, I think I'm, I'm going to actually make this a, a podcast episode as well because uh, it's, it's really kind of impacted me. So, fixed mindset, fear-based, okay? Lots of fear, 
Okay, we want to, obviously we want to avoid that. Pessimism. Obviously, okay, we know nobody likes a pessimist. Sarcasm. Hello. Yeah, that's me. Uh, and, and I try and fix, I'm trying to fix that, but yeah, totally. Sarcasm is, is a total fixed mindset flaw. Scarcity mindset. You know, we talk about that a lot, especially within network marketing, because that scarcity mindset can shut you down so fast that it's not even funny. Um, or, you know, I've, uh, my education was in economics and they talk about a zero sum game, which means if I win, that means you lose. Or if you win, that means I lose. Okay. That's totally a fixed mindset um, problem. The genius or the loser. Okay. This is one that was uh, kind of opened my eyes uh, in reading the book because the geniuses, you know, so often they, we think, oh, well, they did that because they're a genius or, oh, they were lucky, or they had success because of this. And there's always a reason, there's always a cause, a root cause that they can get to where that's not really the point, okay? They're, because, again, it kind of goes back to the zero-sum game. Somebody's a loser and somebody's a winner. No, everybody everybody can win, you know? You know, we like to say that I don't lose, I just, I, I, I just learn, I win or I learn, right? And that's very much more a growth mindset. We'll talk about that in a minute. People getting lucky, okay? People don't get lucky. Let me just tell it right now. People do not get lucky. Okay, I talk a lot about I, I create my own luck, right? But that comes from, again, a growth mindset and, and hard work. The blame game, okay? People say, oh, it's it's her fault. It's my upline's fault. It's my downline's fault. It's, it, it's their fault. It's her fault. It's my wife's fault. It's my husband's fault. It's my boyfriend's fault. It's my girlfriend's fault. It's the dog's fault, whatever. Blame Canada, whatever, okay? It is... Uh, the blame game is totally the a symptom of a fixed mindset. And an ego. Okay, one of the other books I read this year was uh, Ego is the Enemy. And holy cow, you know, that is totally true. If we have an ego about things, we, we have a fixed mindset. Okay, a growth mindset doesn't have an ego. And that's a big and important distinction to make. So, okay, let's go to the other side. Let's go to the growth mindset. We got uh, losing equals learning, okay? This one has been, um, I've seen it a lot in, in our life. Um, our, our youngest plays baseball, okay? Baseball is the world's most frustrating sport, okay? All, nowhere else in the world can you, do, can you do something well 25 to 30% of the time and be considered a Hall of Famer, okay? Yeah. That's one of my favorite players, baseball players of all time, Edgar Martinez, going to the Hall of Fame here in a couple of weeks, okay? And he had like a 300 career batting average, okay? That means 30% of the time he hit safely. It means 70% of the time he failed, okay? Learning from your mistakes and what to do next time is a huge, huge piece of that, okay? So that's part of the growth mindset. Hard work. Okay, there's an old adage, especially in sports, that hard work, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard, okay? Just being talented is part of a fixed mindset. Oh, I've got talent. I can, I can rely on that and get myself through. And a lot of people will do that. They'll be talented. In my, in my sales career, I've seen that a lot. And in fact, you know, let's, let's be honest, I've relied on that a lot because I have a certain level of talent for, for what I do. But I have realized that, again, I talked about making my own luck. When I've made, when I've worked the hardest, suddenly I get the luckiest, okay? Lucky, luck is really hard work meets preparation, okay? And so when I'm prepared, it's amazing how things come to me and I'm able to attract those things to me. Never being satisfied. Never being satisfied with where you are. You're always moving forward. I, I liken it to, to climbing a mountain or to, uh, you're either going up or you're backsliding. You can't, you can't stand still, okay? It doesn't work that way. So in a growth mindset, you are always working to get better. You're always, you never have arrived, okay? Arriving, getting to a spot where you can just quit doesn't exist, right? You continue to grow and you continue to make yourself an increasingly better version of yourself. Uh, you know, in, in, my, in my spiritual beliefs, I believe in eternal progression. Emphasis on progression, okay? You don't, you don't quit, okay? Okay. Um, a positive attitude, okay? Obviously, people are going to have a positive attitude when they're being successful, but it's having a positive attitude when you're not having success, when you're in that learning phase, 
that's really the hard part, okay? So have a positive attitude. That's a huge, huge, enormous, I can't say a big enough piece of the correct mindset for, for this industry, for this, for this company, for whatever you're doing. Everything is an opportunity, okay? Everything is an opportunity. It can be an opportunity to learn. It can be an opportunity to win. It can be an opportunity to, to, to help somebody else. It can be an opportunity to be grateful for what you have, okay? Everything is an opportunity. When you're in a growth mindset, you're always having opportunities. Now, some of those opportunities, maybe you don't want to experience again, right? Sometimes you want to just have to learn something once. But if you can do that instantly, you're going to have an incredible, incredible opportunity to learn and to grow. Um, Extreme Ownership. Okay, you guys, this is another one of the books that I read recently. Extreme Ownership by Leif Babin and Jocko Willink. Um, are two Navy SEAL commanders where they go and they talk, they've, they've created their own business now to where they do consulting for other, for businesses. Okay, but these guys were like, they're Navy SEALs, okay? There is not a more badass group of guys than Navy SEALs. And these guys exercise what they call extreme ownership, okay? Extreme ownerships meaning, meaning they own everything that happens. If they are in charge and something happens below them, they own it. If something that happens at their level, they own it. If something happens above them, they own it, okay? Nothing is ever somebody else's fault because there's always something that they could have done better. Now, when everybody is willing to take ownership, guess what? People are more successful. The whole group is more successful. Taking extreme ownership for everything that you have in your life is an incredibly empowering and powerful message to have for yourself. And so... Always think about having extreme ownership, and I highly recommend the book, by the way. Fantastic read. Uh, and the follow-on, The Dichotomy of Leadership, also fantastic read. Read them both. You can thank me later. Um, a growth mindset person is always looking, again, we talked about kind of always an opportunity. They're always looking for a solution, okay? They're always looking for that opportunity to have a solution for whatever the problem is, okay? They're not searching out problems, they're searching out solutions. And that positive mindset, that moving forward mindset, they will end up a lot happier, but they'll also end up having vastly more success because they're always solution oriented and they're always aiming towards a solution. You know, if, uh, if you're out sailing a ship and you don't know where you're going, you don't have a rudder, okay? You don't have a star to guide yourself by, you won't get to where you're going. If you're always looking for a solution, that's your rudder, that's your that's your North Star or your Southern Cross. Those are the things that are going to drive you in the direction that you wanna to get to. So always looking for a solution, okay? Uh, we talked about um, having a, a scarcity mindset. We wanna talk about having an abundance mindset, okay? Having an abundance mindset, meaning there are plenty of opportunities. Just because Blake is successful or or Nick Jackson is successful, doesn't mean that I cannot be because they already have been. Everybody has an opportunity for success. And when you work hard enough for it, you're going to get it. When you have that positive attitude, you're going to get it. And so that's one of the really important pieces that we want to emphasize in all of this is that we can have that abundance mindset. There's enough for everybody. Okay, There is plenty in the world for everybody. We just have to have that mindset and move forward going through it. Last thing is humility. And when you have, or when you are, hu when you're humble, uh, you're able to get rid of the ego. And when you get rid of that ego, all of a sudden now you're able to have that extreme ownership. You're able to take responsibility for yours, for your actions and any of the actions that are in your sphere of influence. Um, and you're willing to admit when you're wrong. You're willing to take a hard look at yourself to see where you actually are right now and move from there and move forward. Have that progress. And so that's gonna be a huge a huge piece in all this, is the, that opportunity to be humble. Uh, you know, the great thing about money is it makes you more of what you already are. So if you're a humble, uh, caring, compassionate individual that suddenly becomes rich, guess what? You're gonna be more caring, compassionate, and humble. If you're, I guarantee you, the rich jerks that you know were poor jerks before you knew them, okay? Think about that, internalize that, because you want to be 
you're the best version of yourself. That's what we're all trying to strive for. But being a rich jerk doesn't help anybody out. So, um, so again, kind of in the in that mindset for network marketers, some of these must haves. Again, the abundance mindset, ownership for where you actually are. Be willing to admit where you are. The cool thing that that I've that I've experienced recently is this opportunity to show people where I'm going, okay, and and bring them along for the ride with me. Uh, because it's really difficult sometimes if we see a leader who has who's been there, who's been around for 30 years, and suddenly they are on the pinnacle, and they've been, you know, Brent Bryson. I love him, but he's been doing this for 30 years, and and he reached kind of that that pinnacle 20 years ago before I ever had even thought of this. It, it's hard for me to relate sometimes. You know, Blake uh, jokes around about his dad uh, getting excited about fistfuls of $10 bills in his $100,000 Range Rover, right? That's not the easiest for me to understand. But I'm hoping to be able to understand that once I reach that once I reach that point. Right now, I can honestly say to myself that I'm not worthy to be there. I haven't put in the work. I haven't done the hard things. I haven't learned the lessons that I need to in order to get to that level. But watch me as I go because I will be I will get there. And I want to show everybody along the way. So having that that teacher's mindset, that willingness to change what I'm doing, recognize that I'm doing some stuff that's not helping me. And I got to get over those things and I got to get past them and, and move through them. One of the other things that we need to have definitely is, it, for, is a mindset for network marketers is a short term memory. Okay. Uh, we, they talk about this a lot in sports, you know, a quarterback or a pitcher or a hitter has to have a short, has to have short term memory. You can't rely on what you've done in the past and you can't get yourself bogged down by what you've done in the past. You just, you, you take that no and you move on to the next one until you get to a yes. You know, that's that's where it takes. Now, some of the things that we need to avoid, okay? Tying our emotions to success, okay? We can't be overly involved emotionally in the choice that somebody else makes, okay? We need to be kind of level-headed and clear all the way around because if we are, uh, if, if we're overly tied to it, what's going to happen is is we're gonna end up with this, this problem, okay? We're gonna end up with this lack of, of opportunity because we're, we're so focused in on this one person, okay? Um, so you have to disassociate yourself. If you, want it to, if you want it too bad, you'll come across as desperate and nobody likes somebody desperate, right? We talk about the, the dog versus the cat mentality, right? You know, attraction marketing versus, versus grabbing onto somebody, okay? We don't wanna grab somebody on by the ears and, and shake, okay? Uh, to that to that end, overwhelming new distributors with techno babble and industry speak. Okay, we can't get so excited. Oh my gosh, you're in the business now! I got to tell you all these wonderful things that are going to happen. Okay, you cannot do that. You must not do that. Um, I had a great conversation with Carly Durst here just a few days ago, and we talked about how she eases people into the business. You know, first they become a product user, and then maybe they become they sell some product, and then all of a sudden, hey, wait, there's some more to this. And she eases them along that path into where they are ready. She's not forcing things. And you put enough people into that opportunity, they're going to come out the other side. So really positive there. Um, we cannot oversell and be dishonest. Okay, That is how network marketing has gotten bad, a bad rap. Okay? We have to be, we, we have to have integrity with what we're talking about at all times. We have to eliminate negative self-talk. Okay, that doubt that seeps in, that negative talk will crush you. Okay, it will crush you. The things that you tell yourself in between your own ears are the things that you hear the most often, and you have to, you must, absolutely must eliminate that and turn that into positive self-talk. Because when you believe it, when you're speaking it to yourself, it will happen in the world around you. The other thing you need to avoid is imposing your doubts on others your negative beliefs on others, okay? That's one of the things that we can cut ourselves off at the knees because if we don't truly believe it, it's hard for us to believe that somebody else might truly believe it. We have to work on that belief internally and with ourselves. So you guys, I've gotten way more than uh, 10 minutes tonight, but that's what I had in my mind about mindset. The mindset is going to help each and every one of you. Mindset will help you whether you're working on a network marketing business or you're working on rearing your kids or running a marathon whatever, it, all of these mindset tricks will help you if we have that growth mindset. So you guys go out, 
Speak positively to yourself. Speak positively to the world, and it will happen. It will come back to you. Have a growth mindset with everything that you do. Hey, hey, thanks for listening, and please remember to subscribe. And if you loved us, leave us an awesome review on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you consume your podcasts. Now, if you'd like some free training for your team on how your recruiting efforts can be bettered and brought into the 21st century, go to podcast.mlmrenegade.com and get your copy of the Renegade Recruiting Kickstarter.